see you all here this morning. It's lovely to have you. We said that we were going to try and start on time. That was the plan. We were kind of close to starting on time. Um, I want to start this morning. I want to take just a minute to pray. Uh, and then I want to read something for you. And then I'm going to invite um, Karen to come up. Uh, and she's going to share a bit of stuff about the update from the Roman Navy Committee. Uh, so let's pray together first of all. Father, we thank you for this space and this place to gather today. Father, we ask that as we gather here this morning, that the sense of your presence would simply fill this place. Father, we recognize that um, you don't live here, that you come in with us because you've traveled with us through the course of this week. Whatever it is that we've been, you've been to. So Father, as we come together this morning and join our hearts together and focus on you, Father, we ask that you would come, that you would presence yourself with us, that your manifest presence would be released here this morning, that there would be a sense of uh, togetherness, that being in it together, and that unity that is something that we long for, wish for, and work for. Father, we thank you for the invitation to be together and to be together with you. So Father, from the youngest here to the oldest, I pray that you would minister to us this morning, that we would have exactly what it is we need, and that in the midst of all that goes on, that we would hear you. For Jesus' sake, and for his glory. Amen. Let me just read for you. Um, okay. Let me just read for you uh, from Acts chapter 16 this morning as a call to worship. It's an interesting call to worship. Um, from Acts chapter 16, I've been sitting with this passage for uh, the last week, so we're going to read um, a wee bit of this just now. Basically, um, basically we join Paul on one of his uh, missionary journeys. He's gone and he's had a bit of a wander around about. And he's meeting lots of, of people. And in verse, um, verse 9 of chapter 16 in the book of Acts, it says this. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging her, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to him. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight to Samothrace, some uh, and the next day we went on to Neopolis. From there we travelled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. I've been sitting with this passage this week and thinking about that sometimes God speaks to, us, speaks to us and sometimes we feel that God is leading us in a direction and then we get a bit of a surprise. And so Paul has this vision from God and God shows him this man of Macedonia who says, come and help us. But actually when Paul gets to Macedonia, it's not a man of Macedonia that he meets, it's a woman of Macedonia, it's Lydia that he meets. And sometimes when God leads us on a journey, sometimes where we end up is not always where we expect it. We as a congregation here have been on a journey for however many years, 20 odd years that this church has been in existence here, we've been on a journey. And those of you, or those of us who have been around from the very start of that, that know that sometimes as God has led us, we've not always been, not always ended up in the place that we thought we were going. And I suppose we didn't really end up in the place that we thought we were going either in terms of going into vacancy and what that would, has looked like for us. And as we've walked through the vacancy and walked through that together and wondered what on earth God was doing at various times, even throwing a pandemic into the middle of the vacancy, We've wondered where on earth God was leading us. I'm going to invite Karen to come up because you know that we are getting to the end of the time that we have in terms of being able to um, call a minister, being able to appoint or to have somebody who can come and preach for us. And so we reckon that uh, it's a good time for an update. So Karen's going to come 
and she's going to give us a bit of an update as to where the vacancy comes down. And all of you can come in sorry, I keep losing the new language. I've uh, got to. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I want to, on behalf of the team, I really want to thank you all for staying for us. Um, your prayers have been so, so um, valued. Um, we, we really, really want to thank you for those prayers. Um, those prayers have been answered in a lot of ways in the last four months. Um, and there's, there's, yeah, there's lots of stories I can tell you of um, things that we didn't think would happen that happened. Um, and of course, our meeting together. Um, but this is a very, very exciting day, and on behalf of the Nominee Committee, I wanted to announce to you that um, we have, through uh, various applications and interviews, um, elected someone to preach a sole nominee on the 3rd of October. Um, <laughs> um, her, her name is Laura. Um, she is a fabulous woman of God. Um, she, she really, uh, I, I just think I just have to say to you, there really is not a doubt in our minds at all um, that, that this is not in God. This is absolutely in God. Um, and uh, along every single step of the way with Laura, um, time and time and time again, uh, God has hit every single box um, and bashed every nail right on the head. Um, there really isn't a doubt in any of our minds that, um, that this is God. So, uh, the decision from the committee was totally unanimous. Um, we all were in complete agreement and we were very excited before she even left after her interview. We decided that this was absolutely God. Um, we'd really like you to you know, go look her up and go and watch her stuff. Um, Laura is currently on probation with uh, a church in Falkirk. Um, she also does a lot of work with an organisation that's like the Church of Scotland called Sanctuary First, um, which does an awful lot of online stuff. Um, she does early morning prayer every morning, so you can go and watch her doing some of that stuff. She is going to be here though on the 3rd of October, uh, which is a Sunday morning, and she's going to uh, teach us. Um, we managed to catch up uh, in the middle of the week this week, um, and she really wanted to record uh, an interview for you so that you could meet her. She's like somebody else today, so she could be here, but she wanted to record an interview so that you could see her and meet her and hear a bit about who she is and what she's about. Um, so we did that and we've got a bit of a video to show you of our Zoom interview, so we can play that and you can, you can see that in there. Hi Laura, it's uh, nice to see you. I'm so glad that you've um, that you've come and have a wee chat with us uh, and tell us a wee bit more about who you are and what you're about. Um, do you want to just tell us a wee bit about who you are and um, what kind of things that you love doing? Okay, um, yes, so, uh, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm involved in a lot of different things, um, but I would say probably first of all, I'm on fire for the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is the most important, um, is just everything to me. And uh, I want to, um, I'm, I'm passionate about people. And uh, I just, you know, I just want to share the love of the Lord with everybody that I meet and encounter. And so that they just can, you know, feel it and just get that, just feel loved. Um, outside, outside the church, <laughs> um, I love, um, I love animals. Um, I've got two horses, I've got two dogs, I've got a cat, um, and I just, I love being outside because that's where I feel closest to God. I like to start my day off like in a kind of walking prayer, um, with God, and that's that's how it kind of starts. Um outside in nature um and I just I just love it I just love it and I love my family as well and uh I, they're, they're the big things in my life that's so cool um can you tell us a wee bit about uh why you decided to apply to come to White Inch oh well <laughs> Thing is, is White Inch has actually been on my heart for a very long time. Um, whenever I was a student, I would I would hear about um, 
white inch because um, there was I, I was studying with somebody who was a member uh, of white inch and a few other people um, would go along too and uh, they would always try to get me to come along but what would happen but because I was on placement at the time it made it really difficult um, and uh, Alan had came uh, a couple of times actually to to do services with us and uh, a few other things with Trinity and uh, I had like worked with Alan on a service one time but just the way he talked about White Inch there was something that just kind of it was as if like I always knew that I was going to be connected in some way you know how you just get that feeling um and but I just carried on with my training, just carried on with things. I'd, I'd actually really hoped to come on probation to um, uh, White Inch, but that uh, didn't happen because Alan um, had left, so I had to do something else. Um, and then I thought, oh, well, maybe... Um, I thought, oh, well, we'll see what happens. And then the, I tuned in for the service the day that Alistair had said... That, that was that now that you were that you were going to be going but um you know you were getting the parish profile together and all that and I'm like right okay this is that Laura you're just about you're just about there you know you can um and so I, I had uh, I had thought about it for a wee while but God kept saying to me no Laura I've told you where you have to go I've told you where you have to go and it was white inch white inch so I've just had this feeling um well for a few years now <laughs> a few years that this is where I was meant to be <laughs> it's so cool like and reassuring that um God has a plan and that we can always trust the plan that he has even though we might have our own ideas and our own um agenda it's always really reassuring to know that uh, that God's got a plan that's so much bigger and greater and uh, ultimately far more successful than any of our plans would be Oh, I know it. It, re- it really is because the thing is, is like I had um, been at um, I had been at a church called View Park, and View Park is it was a great place, and uh, and I'm like, but I've done everything that I wanted to do. There's only a now one place that in the whole of the Church of Scotland that I went to be in, <laughs> and it's weird. <laughs> but God has is just oh, he's so good, and you think oh, can, can these you know you actually wonder sometimes can these things actually happen to me you know to you can you and you think can God actually be so good that he can he can give us these things put these opportunities away and 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 he does and it's it's just amazing it's just cool. amazing that's very cool and um, what what's your favorite thing to do in your spare time if you had if you had a whole day to yourself what would what, what would be your favorite thing to do oh my, well it would be um well it'd be to go to the stables i would go to the stables i would hang out there uh, for quite a wee while if i had quite a bit of time i would spend a bit of time grooming um Chico and Lady and then I think I would I would ride and then I'd probably hang about and watch them in the field and then I would go and I would uh, go and hang about with my wee uh, grandson. So I would he's three. So uh, that's that's how and then maybe to top it all off I'd have a wee family dinner. <laughs> that's my perfect day. That's great. That sounds like a smashing day. That's a great day. Uh, <laughs> What what uh, what are you most looking forward to about coming to um, preach to us on the third of October? Oh well, I, I'm I'm so excited about this. So um, um, uh, it's just to be able to uh, just be able to kind of be with you all. You know, that's that's what's exciting me the most is to just to be with you all, be able to uh, you know chat and just kind of feel you um I'm really looking forward to the worship side you know this is what I'm really looking forward to you know and then being able to see how the Holy Spirit is actually going to um work through us all in that time and space together 
That's so cool. We're so excited to have you. Uh, cannot wait. It's going to be a really great day. Um, and yeah, can't wait to see you soon. One last question before you go, uh-huh. uh, which would yes. be, what is your ultimate favourite flavour of ice cream? Oh, 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 I've got quite a few flavours. <laughs> Do you know what? My, my favourite flavour the now is tablet ice cream. I really like tablet. Uh, but I do like a wee bit of raspberry ripple and I could be partially mint, mint chocolate chip. Nice. <laughs> but the no tablet. That's a wee lightly classic. <laughs> Polished off by a good pudding. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of us would definitely identify with that. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for chatting to us. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you on the 3rd of October. Looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Hey, that's Laura. Um, and I think that any of the nominating committee would be very, very happy to chat to you with Laura and um, what we think of her uh, and how we've experienced her, um, some of the stories she's told us, um, some of the ways that God has worked through this whole process. Um, you know, we were we were voted as um, the nominating committee by all of you, other people. Uh, I think in July. Was it July? Yeah. Uh, we met, our first meeting was at the first week in August, um, and by uh, the beginning of September, we had um, managed to receive applications from, it wasn't just for the applied, there was other people that applied, she's not the only one. Um, we received applications, we sorted through them, um, we you know, did a whole pile of formal things, we interviewed Laura, and we elected somebody to future so nominee at that. To do it in that space of time, to have four babies together as a team and manage to accomplish all those things, that's only God. That's not because we are very efficient, certainly not because I'm very efficient. Um, and it, it, you know, it is only God, and there are so many stories that the committee would love to chat to you about, um, about ways that God has just worked tremendously through this whole process. Um, so yeah, her name is Laura Diggin, I realise I never told you her surname, so her name is Laura Diggin, T-I-G-K-N. Um, and she would love you to look her up, uh, and yeah, please come and chat to any of us that are on the team um, if you want to know a bit more or you want to ask us any questions, because we would really love to chat to you. Um, but we really want to thank God for so this whole thing, because it, it really has to be uh, purely him that this is done the whole um, the invitation really is to look it up and have a look. There's lots of stuff online um, because we've gone digital, so everything is, is available uh, on YouTube and whatnot, uh, where she speaks. What we would ask you to do is please don't message her, private message her, please don't invite her for coffee just now. Let's get over the third and let her preach first of all. And please don't friend her on Facebook just at the moment. Um, so let's put a wee bit of boundaries in there somewhere. But please do look it up and have a look. And we really do want to speak to the nominating committee too. Because it's a formal thing in terms of church law, we have to have an edict read this morning, which is the stuff we love in my inch, which is the whole edict thing. Uh, but we wanted to explain, we want to do this first so that the language of the edict, you probably get the end of it more. Okay. Uh, so, but we have to do that formally. So Claire's going to come and read the edict because I didn't trust myself to read all the words on the right order. Thank you. We are really genuinely excited um, for the third. Um, please take some extra time in your day on the third uh, as you plan to come. This is the official bit, the notice of nomination, section 22. At a meeting held in the Whiting Centre at 7.30pm on the 8th of September 2021, the nominating committee chose the person who they wish to propose to this congregation of White Edge Parish Church to be our new minister. The name of that proposed person is Laura Dagan, probationary minister at Fulkirk Trinity and Sanctuary First. Arrangements have been made for Laura Dagan to conduct public worship in this church on Sunday the 3rd day of October at 10.30 a.m. Immediately after the service, there will be a vote on whether or not Laura Dagan should be appointed as the new minister of this congregation of White Edge Parish Church. Anyone whose name appears on the electoral register of this congregation of White Edge Parish Church shall be entitled to vote. No one else should be entitled to vote. Reverend Alison Robert McGillan, interim moderator. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, Thursday this week, we are going to start uh, 24 hours of prayer. I would love you to sign up to pray for an hour, sometime between 12 o'clock uh, Thursday afternoon until 12 o'clock Friday afternoon. So uh, if you've got Friday off, right, you want to stay up through the night at some point, please do sign up for a slot during the night, or if you're free sometime on Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening or Friday morning, uh, please sign up for a slot. We're not going to have any uh, gathered prayer during that time, but we really felt it was important to set aside 24 hours of prayer to pray for the future of where we're going, to pray for things going on in uh, our city and things going on in the world as well. So there will be an email coming out with a link to the sign up. And even if you don't sign up using the link on the 24 hour prayer website, I encourage you to please do, do that so you can see that it's coming. But even if you don't sign up on the link, please take some time on Thursday and um, Friday to pray and there will be some prompts some um, uh, ideas and bits and pieces coming out. Um, we're going to use the Padlet, which we've used before. Uh, Rachel's got a Padlet to things on there for us to uh, inspire us to pray and draw close to God at this time as a community. I know loads of you have been praying, hopefully all of you, at different points uh, over this uh, over these last few months. I really just wanted to take some time to pray together and then if you're feeling words of God as well, to share those um, to share those on the tablet or to email us uh, some of those words. Uh, if you're not used to doing things online and doing all of that, don't worry, please just join in with us um, during, the, during that time and we'll catch up um, after that on the Sunday or whatever the things that you want to share with us. Dear yeah, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place in the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us, through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a peace for the eyes of God, let us join you to God with the sincere heart and with the full assurance that he brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and have our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold and steadily to the whole we face that he who draws to stay. And let us consider how we stop one another, one toward God in good deeds, not for giving up meeting together, as some man may have of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I'm not sure that appeared on the as I was reading, but it will appear over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. so I'm going to um, we're going to be on eventing again this week, so um, yeah, yeah, pray for me, pray for me. <laughs> but I have, I have one more notice, so I have a few more notices actually before I start. This, this sermon series that we've put together is called In It Together. And that's all about sharing our lives together, sharing good news and bad news. Friends, it has been a week of good news, right? And I'm going to share, I have the privilege of sharing some other things, other than the part, the part about Laura. Uh, and that in itself is fantastic news. That is such an answer to pray you've lost your sitting on <laughs> Right, more good news. David and Pena are now property owners and have moved into White Inch. That is fantastic. David's at work today, so can't be here. But that is such good news for them and for us as a church community as well. Morgan is, and Andy's not here actually, but yeah, I have permission to share this. Andy Reid has been appointed, well, I've written down and I've lost it. There we go. He's been appointed mission officer at Clyde Presbytery. So he has taken a role within the Church of Scotland, working west of here, north and south of the Clyde River, to encourage and to support strong mission focus across the Presbytery. Now, any of you who know Andy and Joe know that Andy is a pastor, church planter, working in the Middle East with Christians. Yeah, this is right up his street. We hope he'll continue to be in and around Hartinch 
I'm not sure how that will work out, but that actually is fantastic news for Andy as well. So that's my second one. And my third one, my little brother. This week, Amy and her two girls, Anne and Yale, became citizens. <laughs> Love you, we cherish you, we are so delighted with that, at that news, and I just pray it is a blessing to you as I know it will be a blessing to us. So, guys, that, that is amazing. That is just wonderful news. And I'll be praying for each of those groups of people at the end of my uh, talk. Right, let's get going. I hope we packed a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, you learned yeah. uh, what mattered to my church. And you'll be relieved to know that your views that Jesus is at the centre to transform is actually also Laura's heart for church as well. I've actually known her, our training overlapped a little bit, and I've attended a couple of, well, there weren't conferences, there were prayer retreats uh, and a retreat in someone's house with her. And I know her a little, she has such a heart for Jesus. And last week, that's what you were looking at as well, just yet, but this is our heart as well for White Hinge. We are about looking at Jesus transforming us and transforming our community, those around us. That has not changed in the last 25 years, and it's not changing now, and it will be changing in the future. And this week, Helen read to us from Hebrews 10 which is a call to keep going, to keep making Jesus the centre of all we do. And so I thought that would be a good passage today to connect in with and just see how that can help us move forward from here. Oh, there's, there we go, there's, uh, I put on that picture. Yeah, thank you, yeah. And uh, the next slide, thanks. Changes can be big and be small. I remember when I was in high school, the teachers decided to change the direction that people, the students walked around the school. We had, instead of being every corridor and staircase both ways, it was changed to a one-way system around the school. Now, if you can imagine 500 kids all being told to walk somewhere different to get from one class to another, of course, the minor had a bit of chaos. But actually, within a week or two, a lot of the troublemakers, it was pretty much smooth and it didn't change. It was fine, the new system worked better than the old one. What about a bit bigger of a change? This is a photograph of Sweden, 3rd of September 1967. On that day, the Swedish government had decided that the cars would no longer drive on the left hand side they would drive on the right. And there was havoc. And it was pretty major havoc at the time. But it ended up saving more lives. Right? It, because it then meant that Sweden was driving the same side of the road as the countries around it. So, a bit of havoc, a bit of chaos to change, but actually it's good in the long run. And actually, you know, we're getting in a new routine ourselves. I don't know if any of you have ever driven abroad, but I can think of at least one occasion where uh, Brian and I were on holidays in France, weary, tired, stopped for petrol, got back in the road and found ourselves on the wrong side. And at that time, we're very grateful for signs. You're grateful, Brian would say he is grateful. For his wife screaming at him <laughs> for any cars that beat their horn, for anyone that points you back to the right place again. All of those things, the signpost, the wife by your side, is aimed at correcting errors, keeping you on the straight and narrow. We're in it together, it benefits everyone on the road if we're all on the right side. 
So the original readers of the book of Hebrews had been through huge changes. They were no longer Jews. They were now Hebrew Christians. And this book of Hebrews acts like road signs for them, helping them to stay in the right path as they travel along with Jesus. And we too are a group of people who navigate life and faith together. Hence the title, We're in it together. We choose to live our lives together. And just as Hebrews have the original recipients, the letters to the book can help us too and keep us on the right path. It's written as a advice, as a sermon actually, to a group of Hebrew Christians. Now there are maybe first or genera second generation Christians, so they would all know, remember, perhaps have lived through the Jewish way of life, the Jewish culture. And it was probably written before 1870, before the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem. Now, if you can imagine yourself as a first century Hebrew Christian, that is a huge transition. No longer do you need to spend your days worrying about keeping the rules, the commandments, the mitzvah, of which there are a total of 613 commandments and rules. All of that has been swept away and we read instead that Jesus is enough. So all of those rules about personal hygiene, about diet, what you wear, bringing sacrifices to the temple, all of that has changed with the arrival of Jesus. So now, from the book of Hebrews and from the teaching they've received. Our first century Christians understand Jesus is the Son of God. And he introduces a new covenant. Jesus is our high priest and he surpasses all of the Levitical priests from the past. His once and for all sacrifice on the cross is superior to all of those sacrifices mentioned in the book of Leviticus under the Mosaic Covenant. Jesus, and Jesus alone, is the one who has made atonement for the sins of the people. But, like all us, we sometimes slip into the ways of the past, and the Jewish Christians will have done that. And so the message of Hebrews is that road sign that says, Jesus is the better way. Christ is the way. Christ is supreme and completely sufficient for salvation. The first nine chapters of this book lay out exactly why Christ is enough. And we are going to pick up at chapter 10, the next slide comes, which starts, therefore, or since. The writer is telling his readers that they are now free because of what Jesus has done. No more needing to go out to find a spotless lamb, no need to go and find a couple of doves to present to the priest as a sacrifice for your sin. All of that is swept away because of Jesus' work on the cross. And for those of us here, it is Jesus' work on the cross and our acceptance of that which brings us into relationship with Jesus and the hope of eternal life with him. And that hope for us is the same hope that was there for those Hebrew Christians. And so that message is given to those Hebrew Christians who may have been swimming a bit, may have been a bit doubtful, and the same message is given to us. Throughout all that you have been through, this past 25 years, but in particular the past two years and um, the fact that we still live in a pandemic situation. Throughout it all, Jesus is still the one of the throne. Jesus is our hope, the one that we turn to in all our situations. So we have a therefore, and now after that comes a series of, well, let us. 
And we start with drawing near the God with a sincere heart. How do you do that? And we're going to get on to meditate in a moment so you can get your thoughts out. How do we do that? We live in two worlds. The world of space and time, the world the influence around us, but also the world of the spirit and eternal things. How do we stop ourselves being drawn into the things of the world? And we do that by drawing near to God. Not necessarily just once a week, not just once a week in here, but in the mornings, at noontime and afternoons. So many different ways and times that we can use to draw close to God. It might be church, it might be being here today. Maybe you're a worshipper and actually saying praise to God is what enables you to draw close. Or perhaps it's serving in the side desk at the back. And for some people, that serving is actually what enables them to draw close to God on the side desk, getting a meal for someone. I want to give you a couple of minutes now to gather, if you wish, to put a couple of folk around you and just talk about. What it is, what enables you to draw close to God? What resources do you have to help you draw close to God? So let's move on to the next thing. Let's move on to the next let us. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. I wonder what was going on with the Hebrew Christians that caused the writer to write this. I wonder were they drifting back to their old days and their old ways as well. I wonder did the original recipients of this letter need the reminder that they are free of the restrictions of the past of the Jewish Torah. Jesus is enough. I'm just going to share a quick story here. I visited Jerusalem and I visited Yad Vashem, which is the, the Holocaust, the Jewish History Museum. And in the basement of, of that, there is what there is in so many museums, there is a restaurant somewhere to get refreshments. But because of Exodus 2319, which states, do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk, as, a, as their way of putting that into practice, the Jewish people would have two complete kitchens. And in the basement of this uh, museum, there were two completely separate restaurants, completely separate staff, there were completely different seating arrangements, you couldn't go from one to the other, and there was a barrier in the middle so that you couldn't meet. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. The Jews interpreted that as meat and dairy must not meet, they must not come together. And so they had completely different kitchens. And in a Jewish home, they had a completely different set of knives, set of bowls, utensils so that nothing of meat would be contaminated by dairy. And so the intricacy of the rules took up most of the Jewish, I guess, Jewish women's lives and, and actually implemented that in the household. And so you can just imagine the freedom that comes from the releasing of those rules and just being told and taught, actually, Jesus is enough. So maybe it was that, maybe it was the rules, or maybe it was actually a bit more mundane than that. Maybe some of them were disappointed. Maybe some of them didn't find their life as straightforward as they wanted it to be. Maybe some of them struggled with ill health, finance problems, coping with fear and anxiety. There's lots of things that have been thrown at this young group of believers. But actually, they're urged, and we are urged, don't give up. Keep on keeping on. Persevere. Hold on in there, guys. And so for us today, have a new hope with Jesus. We've heard some amazing, some wonderful news today about Laura coming, and that is just such an answer to prayer. 
but she will be your minister. You know, she will not be your Messiah if you're looking to her for your answers, if you're looking to her for solving all the solutions. She will disappoint. She's human, like the rest of us. She has as many days in the week as we all have. We hold to Jesus to transform us as individuals, as the church, and from that, reaching out into our community and beyond. That is where our hope lies. But sometimes, and we have had two really tough years, you have been through such a lot, and I am just so privileged to have been allowed to walk alongside with you and to see you all come through that period. But it is okay to ask the question, what things might have caused you to give up on the hope that you profess? So you can choose to answer this by chatting with each other, but then I would encourage you to put an answer, a word or two, into the mente as well, so we can just see some of the things that disappoint in our walk with the Lord. So whether that's ill health, whatever, you can have another, say, two, three minutes, I'm going to do the same again. Anybody need many of those things and actually there is something of a relief in looking at them thinking okay maybe I'm not alone maybe others have similar things causing doubts that I do but we are encouraged to spur one another on and having read that list of things that maybe cause doubt in people's mind. Hold that in heart when you think about actually knowing that. How might I spur someone else on? How might I encourage someone? How might I encourage or meet with them in some way? Yeah, George Floyd being up there as well. Such a big picture. Uh, a lot of the stuff is small and personal, but actually there's worldwide stuff going on as well that causes us doubts and fears. But we're encouraged. Let us, the writer says, consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. And the way out of all those doubts is actually to do these things for each other where we can. To serve one another, to love one another, because actually inspiring one another on to love is, is an action. Love is an action. Love is a choice. It is something we choose to do for someone. It can be a remote and quiet prayer, but it can also be turn up to the house with a meal or a phone call or a text or a message or sending someone a funny meme a, a song that has meant something to you that actually lightens someone else's heart. And so our next question is a more personal one. What could uh, sorry try that again. What could someone in church do this week to show you love? I would really like this not to say I'd like Brian to take out the food so you know what it is, okay? No the intervention, we're not specifically targeting people, I want you to do this for me. But, what would it look like for you to be shown love by the church this week? You know, there's a, there's a similar theme running through a lot of that. We want contact with each other, whether it's actual physical face-to-face, -face, go for a coffee, do something, or a text, a phone call, something like that. Let's forget it, so. 
Can you add up these letters? <coughs> yes, you can. Right, okay. So we can work. Uh, well, I'll move on now. Um, the next two slides, I'm possibly going to go back and forth a little bit. Okay, these are responses that we did last week. Who's in our church? Okay? And I just wanted to just pick up a couple of points from them very, very quickly. According to that, we have 31 young people in primary school or younger. Okay, now even if we got that wrong, because I, I know we were, if everybody thought of our young people would keep them in, then that would inflate the numbers. And say even it's 15 to 20, a lot of them aren't here. A lot of them are finding it difficult to actually bring their children here. And yet, one of the biggest things that you talked about what was important to us as a church family was the fact that we had children in church. So if we're going to have children in church, we somehow need to make them more welcome, make it easier for their parents to bring them again. So that, that was one thing I did this. Um, the other, perhaps, the 18 to 30s and the 30 to 50s, if you're working full time, it's actually quite hard to then volunteer to do stuff at churches as well. And sometimes churches which have got a huge number of retired people actually have got a lot of people who can spare a few hours for the same time. So uh, you can see the time is going to be restricted for people in this church because you are younger. Um, the next slide, thanks, Shuma. And this one, which best describes you? I think probably the only one I want to pick up from this is housebound. Okay, I can think of at least three people who are housebound, and um, I'm probably underestimating. There will be more than that. By their nature, housebound people find it hard to get everything to get here, and so you may think, "Oh, that's just one person at the end." It's absolutely not. And when we're going through this next bit, to bear in mind just to think about. How do I actually reach out to other people in the organization? You can do lots of thinking, lots of hard work. I do appreciate we are getting closer to the end. However, I'm going to take five minutes out to sing another song. Okay? And I've chosen this song because it was done all during lockdown. It's a, a Brighton church, and they made the decision to go out, to be together, out in the road. It was just after sunrise that they recorded this. And they're using it, they use it to encourage their church. And I just want us to take five minutes of encouragement. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds, his hands, his feet My Savior of that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Then the 
from the third At break of dawn The sun of heaven rose again Oh trample death Where is your sting? The angels roar For Christ the King Oh praise the name of the Lord our God Oh praise His name forevermore For endless days we will sing your praise Oh Lord, oh Lord our God He shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night, pierce the night. and i will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on jesus face we're looking at you jesus Eyes on fire in your glory in the heavens above. But one day you will be with you for all eternity. And on that day, all pain will end and forevermore. We're standing all in the place we will sing our songs of love. And we're free from all our suffering. Free from all our sin, free from all our shame, free from all our longing, and we'll see you face to face, and with the angels, and all the angels, all eyes will be on you, we will worship, we will worship, we will worship, and we will sing to you, King Jesus. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Maybe they think they don't fit in, maybe they feel they're not part of it, but actually we are a body of Christ together. If one part is missing from white inch, all of us suffer. And so by encouraging one another to come along, to meet in whatever way that looks like, and think back in some of those responses that people gave that would help them be encouraged to speak, a meeting, a text, a card, coffee, whatever it is, look out for one another. The other questions that we have are how do we continue meeting? What would it look like to put on the hat of somebody at the group you're not in and say them to look at some the point of view of church as a retired person? What might it look like to be church and what would help you to be involved and supported by church Think about perhaps what it might look like, particularly for a young family, to come along uh, and to be part of church together. And we've seen that we can do things other than one and a half hours in here on Sunday morning. It can be online, it can be by Zoom, it can be walks, it can be sitting in gardens, playing in gardens, 
whatever that happens to look like, that works best for you. This is an opportunity to answer some of those questions on what it would look like and to do church that would include more of us. And that's why she was talking about the church on Tuesday thing, to try and pick up some people. We know that not everyone can do everything, that there will be some things that some people manage to do that others won't. But what we're looking to do is to include all of us at some stage of the week in being together to worship and to support and encourage one another. I'm going to finish there for now. Um, the stuff will be online. I would really encourage if you're one of those groups that maybe has difficulty engaging with church to please either speak to one of the leadership team or to put ideas into the meditate so that it's all in there in the mix. What the series is doing is it, just trying to do a little bit of John the Baptist thing, okay? To just pave the way and just get ourselves sorted, not all our cups in a row, but yeah, look at what we can do to make life easier for us post pandemic. And then Laura, when she comes in, God willing, will pick up and run with some of those bits and pieces. But this is something we all need to do. It's not dependent on having a minister. Just need a minister to push it. It needs us to realise that we are church together. And we need to encourage one another. I want to finish by praying. I'm going to pray for four people, four things that I mentioned earlier. And then we're going to put up the grace, which is from Corinthians, I think. And I'm going to encourage us all to say that to one another. Okay? So let's start by praying together. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the work of the nomination committee. I thank you for all that's been going on there to the extent that they are now in place to present Laura Diamond to us. I pray a blessing on Laura. I pray that you will continue to prepare her heart. And I love, Lord, that you have been preparing her heart for years, because we have been praying for that since the big, the big the first came to be in. So we thank you, Lord, for answered prayers. We thank you for Lord. And we pray blessing on David and Pina too as they settle into their new home. May they find they have loving and joyful neighbours. May they find peace in that place. May they find prosperity there. And I pray, Lord, that you will just meet them in their neighbourhood. And just as they walk the streets, as they live in the church. Yeah, thank you for both of those precious young people. And we thank you for it now and then. We thank you for this long service, this path was not long service, just two years of service to us over the past two years. It's just been such a help, such a blessing. And I pray for him as he prepares to take on a huge role in the church of Scotland. And I pray also for Clyde Presbytery as they get used to working with one another at their new presbytery and as Andy walks alongside them. And finally, we pray for Amy and uh, Lord God to you, the glory, the power, and all the glory around this event. I thank you for this week, this past week, the citizenship ceremony, and I just pray blessing on that precious family. On Amy, Anne, and Neil, and on Kevin and I too. Bless them, Lord. Protect them. Protect their mind, the body, and their spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for the huge blessing that they are going to be to their country, Scotland. And for us, Lord, thank you for the time to meet together. Thank you for the ideas that we have heard. Thank you for the honesty that we have heard as well. And I pray, Lord, that, that we will continue to just walk along this path and just tweaking things, doing what we can to just include all of us. Help us this week to encourage one another. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, if you're able, I would invite you to stand and we'll say the grace. The words are here the front. No, that's not it. It's only my mentee. Uh, can we go back to show that?